Hello everyone, welcome to the LARP Tales podcast, the greatest LARP podcast in the world. My name is Oliver, I am your host. Joining me, as always, is my co-host and wife, Robin. Hey Robin. Hey Oliver. And today we are going to be going over our time at Empire LARP E2, that's the spring equinox the second empire larp of the year before we get into that though our usual housekeeping if you are new to the youtube channel click subscribe hit like comment down below if you are listening on an audio platform such as apple podcast spotify leave us a five star review so people can find the content we do have a patreon as well if you enjoy what we do here and you want to support us in that way go check that out and with all that out of the way let's get into our recap of empire larp e2 Okay, Empire LARP E2. This is the second event of the year. If you haven't already listened to our podcast on E1, you can go check that out. I'll put it up up here somewhere. But now we are going to basically talk over what uh, we did as our characters at Empire LARP E2. So, Robin, yeah. how, how, how was it? it was, the weather was awful, right? Should we just do one like blanket statement at the start mm. of this one? The weather was rubbish. Yeah. Again, yeah. it was rubbish. Wasn't great. Kind of got better towards the end. It was cold. It was wet. And then we got sunburned. It was everything in a weekend, you know. But you know what? We've talked about it. Weather was rubbish. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I don't think I'll, I'll agree to because we're probably going to have to keep mentioning it because it was it was so erratic. Uh <laughs> And it's a shame because like E1, it was the weather was bad, like really bad, and we were like, oh well, you know that's that's the winter winter worn out the way with at least, you know it, it can't be any worse, and it was almost worse, almost, like it wasn't it? It was it was almost worse. I, basically, if the pack down had been the same as E1, it would have hundred yeah, percent been worse. Pack down was fine. It was dry. It was sunny. All the cars got on the field. Like beer. Barely anyone got stuck. I know a few people got stuck, but it wasn't that bad at the end. Um, yeah. But yeah, like the start was like, it took us forever to get the tent set up. So like, I mean, if we jumped like straight into Thursday when it came to getting mm. everything set up because it was our first time setting up when it was wet. So we ended up taking forever to get like the main tent set up. Um, one of the tents we ended up just leaving until the next day and yeah a lot of the setup just kind of was like well we're not going to get it done today it's too wet we can't be outside trying to build archways and tables and things so let's just put the cover up and then go to the pub yeah <laughs> uh yeah the irony is that like after e1 like the weather has been like glorious after the event as well so uh yeah not not a great not a great putting up of tents um so i think someone had a birthday as well on the thursday night uh so there was like a hobbit party in in dawn and uh in the dawn camp and i cannot believe how wintry it was it was literally, oh my gosh like we were, we were literally st like standing there it was it was wet and then we were like oh well you know it's wet this sucks and then people were arriving and then you're like oh well at least it's not cold and then the temperature dropped when this when the when the sun uh, went behind the clouds, and you were like, "Oh, it's cold," you know, and you started shivering. And then the wind started, and it was just like a wintry, uh, just horribleness, you know. And to the point where I was like, "What <laughs> is this even worth it? Can we not have a decent event?" You know. So. Yeah, I mean, like the yeah. So we ended up um, heading over to the the Hobbit party, which mm. was pretty cool. Like, on people, it made like a huge effort, and like it was like a proper Hobbit party, and there was like really good music and cake, and people singing and dancing. But then, yeah, like you said, that kind of drop in the temperature and that sort of realization. Like, keeping in mind on the Thursday, most people don't have things like campfires and lights and stuff set up because normally you're 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 going straight to the forge or something mm. or you're not necessarily got everything set up and ready mm. so it was a bit of a scramble in the dark to get some fires going just to kind of warm everything up a bit but yeah. i yeah. mean we were all together which is quite nice yeah. but, i mean it, it to, to be fair it wasn't too bad after that because then after that we went off to the forge which is now becoming a uh 
quite a dangerous uh... hey oliver hey hey how, how many bottles of mead did you drink i don't actually know <laughs> I don't. Actually. I know how many bottles of mead you drank. Thing is, I'm not like usually a big <laughs> mead drinker. Like I'm, I'm a beer drinker. Um, and just to say as well, these bottles are not like little beer bottles. They're like wine bottles of mead. And we had this joke before about like you know drinking like two bottles of it. Um, mm. I believe you got onto three and a half bottles. Yeah. And you already had a lot of beer before we went out. <laughs> yeah, no this this was this was my most damaging Thursday ever. I think <laughs> <It's> hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I will say, you know, like, you know, we 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 do we do talk about consuming alcohol on this program. We consume alcohol while we're recording this program. Sometimes, obviously, al <laughs> alcohol is a is a serious <laughs> drug. You should drink responsibly. Um, but I, you know, I am a, I am an adult. I, I am aware of the risks of, of, of consuming a lot of alcohol. Um, just so everyone knows that I know. <laughs> that I can... Plus like, it's almost like we tend to like know our sort of limits. And if one of us has had like a bit too much, the other one kind of just like slows down because that's sensible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Like, we had so much fun just like hang out with people in the forge we got to meet lots of new people and quite a lot of people were like bought you drinks and everything as well oh, which was, yeah. it was amazing <laughs> I, I met i met some very generous um listeners a couple of listeners of the podcast came up and uh uh bought me a drink by the way which is the it's the perfect uh, listener interaction but <laughs> i know i've said before oh yeah come up and say hi you know out of role play um but yeah if it, like buy, buying me a drink in the forge is is just that's one of my favorite interactions ever um but... yeah i think um we're gonna need to start making like i mean the last couple of events we have done that like the thursday night end up just going to the forge um and i just i love it because every time you go there you always end up seeing like the same sort of friends and things and everything there as well. Oh, the usual and... suspects, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the the, the, tr the trouble. Oh my god! Like yeah. I had so much fun. Um, Tom from Larps and Tarps and myself, we just got so drunk and just like <laughs> brainstorming the most amazing podcast ideas we could think of. Were they good the ideas? Day, <laughs> we bumped into each other next day. We're like, none of those were good. Were they? <laughs> we should do a podcast with about LARP and Lego. And then, and then we can make oh, our characters out of like <laughs> that was the type of standard we always were going to. We were just like, oh my god, this, we need to write this down. We don't need to write it down. We'll remember it. It's so yeah. amazing. Yeah, no, very very few good ideas have ever come out of a drunken conversation. <laughs> you think at the time they are great ideas. At um, one point, I think we were like, well, why don't we just start recording now? I mean, there's a bit of background noise, but it'll be fine. No, no. Uh, so yeah, no, we met met up with some. Uh, with some good good friends, plenty plenty of people that have been on the podcast and podcast listeners, uh, and just yeah, just just having a good old time. Also, the mead that I was drinking, it was like the the regular non flavored mead, which is like somehow like five percent <laughs> stronger than the flavored mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> so you know, I ended up at one point like having two bo full bottles when I think I'd already had one. Because even I knew at the time I'm going a bit hard here, but I was enjoying myself immensely. You know, I was having a a good laugh, especially when I bumped into certain players. Maybe embarrassingly, um, I may have bumped into a few people <laughs> who are like senators. I think. Well, in fact, at one point, I think I had all three Dornish senator fizz reps in front of me, and I was telling them all that I want to be. I just want to be a general, so I commit genocide. Um, <laughs> and I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I did there, the there same. There was some interesting well. conversations. Yeah. Um, hey Rosa, <laughs> that was fun, I, wasn't I, it? Yeah, I, don't, I don't really remember much of that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was good fun though, because we all just had a good laugh, mm. and then we like stagger back. Luckily, the there's a water tap that we pass on the way back, so I got to fill the empty meat bottles with water. Yeah. So, uh, a stagger to the ten. We, we've we've all done it. Um, I I will I will admit the following morning, I woke up and I thought to myself, oh no, I've just ruined my entire weekend because that's how rough I was. I actually recovered pretty well, you know. It's yeah, not, it's, not, it's not my first rodeo. 
um but we had we had like a photo shoot book the next morning (laughs) and i think it was like it was like 7 a.m i was like hey oliver you're like no no (laughs) just went no no i was like do you want i well i'll go and start the coffee but i was i was like i might need your hand in like half an hour you're like no (laughs) you were like Thankfully, yeah, thankfully I came out of ten and like like Mark and Ash are out there like, hey, how's all of us keys? Uh, yeah, still yeah. drunk, I think. I think I think we I think we've all done it. I think you, I think was it E four last year? I think you that was kind of your turn. There's only once I can remember you being really bad. Um, but we we literally all of us, everybody on that field has done it on a Thursday. Every everyone's overdone it slightly. Um, oh yeah, no, it was Thursday last hmm. year. That's yeah, no, you're right. That's the one that Ash and I like face planted outside mm. people's tents and we were just like like properly away with it but that little happy giggly stage we were just getting up to complete like shenanigans <laughs> yeah yeah i mean I, I feel like because we're saying this publicly i should be like oh yeah remember to drink responsibly but you know i'm not your i'm not your dad <laughs> yeah like you know most people i mean were... yeah like don't be silly remember all the main things make sure you've got friends around you make sure you got people that you trust and you know make sure you know how you're getting back don't go anywhere by yourself in the dark at night when you're drunk. And the first aid tent is next to God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> keep, keep these things mind. in mind, but let's not get to that mm. stage. <laughs> okay. Talking about the fo- forge, I'm, I'm going to be uh, critical of, of PD here. Um, the forge is falling apart. Like, like, can we get <laughs> like, I, I know, um, I, I, you know, I know it's, it's been around a while, the forge and it used to, I mean, I'm told it used to have two stories on it and everything. But even since the years that we've been playing the past like two and a half years, like it's it's lost floorboards, it's lost a wall, you know, it's lost part of the floor. And it... it was definitely part of a roof at one point. Tell me there was. I feel I th- like there was. I think there was more of a, there was definitely parts of a roof when we first ever went there. I don't know whether it was right over the bar itself, but there was definitely Maybe. parts where you could get undercover. Um, but yeah, the thing is like literally falling apart and I'm just like... Come on, PD. I know you. I know you. I know you, you. You're getting more and more people. I think. I think I did. I heard that the attendance had dropped slightly. Um, this event to last event, which is kind of expected, because you know E1, everyone gets excited for E1. A lot of new players come to E1, and then it dropped. Obviously, with the weather yeah. being really bad as well. But still, I think. I think you're probably making enough in ticket sales to actually fix some of the floorboards in there, and that would be, it'd be especially since it's the only. Basically, th- th- there's a reason I never go to it in character, you know, because I'm like, Meh, it's not massively immersive in there i know i, th- I think like the because it's the only bar that takes um out character money in character yeah. time um so but I've, i'm never like oh let's go to the cool tavern because it's not that cool to be honest <laughs> so the, the, yeah, the i ones... think yeah like, that would be quite cool mm. that could have a bit of, like of a revamp i think that yeah. would make a big difference like even just to kind of like fulfill that sort of like mm. tavern that we kind of all picture when it comes to like things like D and stuff like there's it, it, it could be so cool yeah. um but just on like a basic level yeah, yeah fix, we could yeah, do yeah, with fix, a few floorboards floor and... <laughs> just make, make it a bit <laughs> a more little steady. wall a wall, just a roof so we don't get the rain just hammering down on us when we're like just randomly because the rain was so random this this event oh as well. Uh, but yeah, that's 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 my moan about PD. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, th- Thursday, Thursday done and dusted. I guess we'll move on to what we did on Friday. You've already... Uh... Yeah, yeah. So like we got up as usual, did our coffee thing, met a few people. Well, you, you did the coffee thing. I did the coffee thing <laughs> and then we got ourselves all ready and everything for the photo shoot, which we ended up running so late for. It was one of these things they were like, it was just, it was one of those mornings where like, I couldn't find anything. I hadn't unpacked the day before and couldn't find like half of my stuff. And it became a bit of a like panic, just trying to get ready in time. Mm um luckily the photographer kieran um was absolutely incredible and did um because we were like half an hour late (laughs) oh my god well because i messaged them i was like hey we are running late everything bad is happening at once how long do we have (laughs) completely and they were just like like, Yeah, they were like, it's okay. You've actually got this full mm. time here. Like, even if you mm. get there for part of it, we'll get you sorted. And I was like, oh my God, thank you. Yeah. And I was like, you don't have to meet us at there because we're meant, he was meant to come meet us at Sentinel Gate. Mm. And I was like, well, in Dawn, there's a back passage 
that you can cut through and I was like you don't need to meet us at the gate we're going to take the shortcut through <laughs> and meet you in the woods yeah yeah um yes. and it was still like sporadic rain as well which kind of it, it kind of sucked yeah. really but um to be honest actually it, the temperature wasn't too bad um but the, the rain the rain sucked I mean it probably would have been worse if it was like sweltering heat during the photo shoot to be honest so um, yeah I think so um but we were able to grab everything. Big thank you to Kate for literally dressing me. I mean, she literally did. That's it's, that's what that's what happened. It's the fact you were like, right, tie, tie it. So I'm like, I don't know how. This is the first time I've ever tied tied this dress, and you're like, just do it correctly the first time. And I'm like, I've I've no idea what I'm doing. I'm like, I'll I'll literally I'll tie it how I think. You were like, how does it look? And I'm like, it looks terrible. <laughs> you were like. I was like, but that's what you're gonna. I went get over to Kate. I was like, Kate, are you there? I need you. <laughs> I forgot my eagle feather and my dress isn't on. <laughs> She's like, just come in here. Let's just dress you. <laughs> what happened to your eagle feather? Did you actually bring it? I know. I think it's in the bag oh, in okay. our, our our house. <laughs> I yeah. saw it and I was like, I need to bring this. I'm gonna put this in a special place. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we got everything on and we were got we got to go out and do like a really cool photo shoot in the woods. Um yeah, so there's like lots of photographers that do um photo shoots with everybody before time in. So if you want to do like a more pose photo shoot, if you go into the Facebook group um and it's the photo forum Facebook group, you can see who's doing what and they'll put up all the sort of slots and everything before time and then you can book a cool photo shoot. But this was our first time doing it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. To, to be honest, it's usually because you just don't have enough time. I mean, we, we're, we're terrible content creators as well. Uh, you know, trying to get, we could get content done as well. But honestly, Friday is just, this also as well was the anxiety event. For, I think for both of us, uh, I had very bad anxiety for a lot of this, uh, for a lot of this event. And Friday in general, like my my nerves start can sometimes start around about midday, and you're just like, oh yeah. Even though it's six p.m. that we start, the Friday always goes so quickly. So like we were done with the photo shoot, and then it's like right, okay, you come back, you sit down for a little bit, you chat for a little bit, and then go, okay, right, well, should we get some get in towards lunchtime? Should we get somebody to eat now, or should we get somebody to eat later? And then you're like, oh oh crap, we haven't gone to we haven't got our uh, player packs yet. Um. I mean, ideally, you want to get your play packs on Thursday because it does. It takes up a long, a, basically a good chunk of your time. If you are camped in Dawn or Wintermark, you've got to walk a long way to go get your player pack, basically, because God yeah. is even further away now. Um, like, my, my advice hmm. that I'm hoping to take next time is Thursday, get player packs. Friday, as soon as weapon check opens, just get it done. <laughs> Because I always leave it and I, I didn't get my player pack this time, did I? Until like, um, was it really late on the Friday? I think it was like really think... late, late Friday night was or was it, it Saturday? I'm pretty sure it was Saturday you went up and got <laughs> No, it couldn't have been Saturday because yeah. you yeah. had your sword Saturday. So it must have been Friday I did... night. Yeah, I had my sword Saturday. Yeah. 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 Um, but I, I'm pretty sure I only got it like, yeah, no, it must have been late. It must have been late on, on... Yeah, oh, no, it was. Yeah, it was really late on Friday, yeah, that we didn't end up getting our player packs because basically... Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they they shut at five or something and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, all the God team are, are getting dinner. I'm like, yeah, but the, the game's are about to begin <laughs> in, like, two hours. <laughs> like, if I can't get it now, I'm not going to be able to get it until time in. And right enough, we didn't actually get our player packs until well into time in. Yeah, I'd because... like a... Yeah, we'll, we'll get to the time in, but anyway, before mm. I go into all those details. But yeah, yeah, so we... um Friday... Yeah, we ended our usual then we got after a photo shoot. Um it made it easier because I was already like half in kit, which was nice. And then um we just went and got yeah, weapons sorted, everything else, finished setting up Still the camp. Seemed like a oh the, oh that's why it was a rush because we were trying to set up camp. That's why I was like, why are we in such a rush? Oh yeah, because none of the camp was set up on Thursday. So yeah, that's why it was such a such a rush. And there was people like showing up like right on the mark as well. And it was peeing down with rain, like sporadically <laughs> as well. So people were like arriving and then just like sat in their vans or whatever, waiting for the rain to pass because it absolutely hammered it down. And then we had a disaster that we didn't realize until later. But I'll mention it now yeah. because this is another thing that caused us a load of anxiety. So we had like put our, the front of our tent on, a, it was like on a slope where the Maltair camp is, um, which is usually 
great for the Mortar camp because the water runs away from us. Uh, we had plonked our tent um, and we had not done, uh, for whatever reason, I had not done the bottom sheet up like when I was closing the doors. So the rain was like literally falling into our doorway and going between <laughs> the ground sheet and our mats. So it was getting caught inside our tent. And then we later realized where our beds are, there was a puddle, a large puddle of water in our there tent. There was a lake. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, basically a lot of our like OC clothes and shoes and socks and oh. underwear and, and pajamas <laughs> and all that freaking soaked uh so that yeah that caused several us... shirts leggings like yes. everything our monster like... kit oh yeah it would just oh the full monster kit yeah yeah it got absolutely drenched so that we didn't realize this until to friday the friday when we went to bed and saturday morning that this had happened but that's clearly when it happened was when we were like putting stuff up because we were constantly stood in the doorway you know and it was obviously just running straight into our uh, underneath our uh our ground sheet yeah. so you know lesson learned um but yeah it makes it makes the event a little bit miserable when you like you got especially when it was cold as well at night even though it's june it was cold at night and on the saturday night not having like pajamas and then having you know partially damp bed sheets and that you're like oh this just sucks, sucks. it was one of these things where like all the things just kind of like went wrong yeah. one at a time and yeah. i was just like okay um yeah, there was no way of drying it either. We had like a lot of towels. We took lots of towels. Every single towel completely soaked through. So I was just well, like, we didn't realize what it was at first. <laughs> at first we were like, didn't we bring some water in in a bag and it's leaked? So we just put some towels down and be like, oh, that would dry up. And then it wasn't until like, I was like, well, it's wet over here as well. And over here. And oh no, there's a puddle underneath the bed. So... Yeah, because like I genuinely thought I'd left like one of the bags of ice like in a bag somewhere. I thought, I bet I must have done that. That that would explain yeah. it. It would explain all the water. It explain it pooling. Mm. No. <laughs> no, but it's fine. Lesson oh. learned. We'll zip up the bottom of the tent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're twenty five minutes in. Should we get? Should we get to the time and stuff? Yeah, because um, we got all sorted out and everything, and then time in. We both had so many. We didn't. We didn't even bother with our meeting that we normally have because time in came, and we were all like, uh, "Nice to see you, family. Goodbye." <laughs> yeah, let, let's do all the things. So. Uh... Do you want? Do you, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? I go first if you want. I'm. Yeah. I'm, I'm... yeah. So, time in. I was skirmish at six thirty. That I was going to be going on, and I wasn't sure what this was going to involve. So it was a Deadwood night skirmish, mm. and I'd like received a letter from my uncle Starash, basically asking you know me to come on the skirmish. And I was like, yeah, that sounds great fun. But he also hinted that there was more to it. And I was like, okay. And no, knowing him, I knew he wouldn't see anything out of character before time in. Um, I knew that as soon as time in came, that is when I would find out. And sure enough, time in came. And he appears. And he's like, yeah. So this skirmish, it's going to be... Um, there's going to be um, Varushka there. There's going to be a large contingency from Dawn. There's going to be marchers and Wintermark. And he said, I would like you to lead Dawn on this one. And I was just like, <gasps> like, OCO is like, oh my God, that is terrifying. <laughs> I was not expecting that. And then I see, I was like, that's actually really exciting. So, um, yeah. At, so he was like, yes, so um, like come up, see everyone and everything. And then you can, you, you're you basically in charge of um, Dawn going on the skirmish. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. So that's like what I kind of got all psyched up for. I think it was maybe like just as timing was about to happen sort of thing because they were timing in at their 10 and so on. So then I was like, ah, shit, okay. And let's get everybody. Because a time in skirmish, it's 6.30, time in's at 6. Um. 30 minutes is not long especially when within that time the way it works you really want to be at the gate about 10 15 minutes before yeah, the skirmish least. is due to go at, at least. least because you need yeah. to count everyone you need to get people in order mm. because the people right at the back or might not make it onto the skirmish they only let so many people on so there's a lot of things there so really a time in skirmish means you literally need to quickly speak to everyone and just get to that gate is how it works yeah. so yeah that's how, how how my one started 
Um, so I basically started by heading up to Orzel, meeting everybody from Dawn who's going to be going, making sure they all knew that they were following me. And I had uh, Martin Durondo with me to kind of cheer me on and keep me going. Um, so that's what I was tying in. Where, where about did you go? Um, well, so the, the reason why uh, you didn't have many more tears, you did, you did have one more tear, right, with you? Um, I had Ash. Yeah, with Ash, okay. Did you not have Morrigan as well? Oh, no, no, I had Morrigan. I didn't have yeah. Ash. Ash, were you? No, I had Morrigan. Yeah, yeah. So, all, yeah, all the Mortares went in different... Well, because yeah. I think I think um, Lachlan was going off to speak to someone uh, about the skirmish, about basically. The about the next about skirmish. About the 7 o'clock skirmish, yeah. So, Morrigan. Yeah. Morrigan skirmishes now. Yeah. Came was, on this skirmish. It was a wild few hours, because basically, basically the, this for people who don't know, there's, there's this storyline going on in the campaign where this uh, uh, thing, we don't know exactly what he is, we don't know whether he's a sovereign or whatever, but he's called the Deadwood Knight. He's basically, he's a little bit like the Green Knight from from uh, the Legend of King Arthur, right? He's he's kind of, so he's basically uh, hanging out in Varushka and Dawn. He is, seems to be like this undead, seemingly, again, we don't know what he is, but he's, he's like uh, killing, he was killing a load of... Uh, Imperial enemies, and then when once he finished with them, he started killing Imperials, and now he started like attacking, uh, like Dornish houses, um, and now he has like these, uh, like lieutenants or whatever that he's sending out. So, um, currently, in fact, actually, if you if if you want to go and listen to our podcast that we did with the guys from Fake Swords Real Feelings, they described the first ever yeah. skirmish with the Deadwood Knight really well that they went on. Um, this is a continuation of that. But there was three skirmishes back to back. It was like 6.37 and 7.30. One in... I think they went on all three skirmishes yeah. this time as well, I think. Yeah. They, they definitely came on this one with, with me. Mm. So They're obviously badass. there wasn't that much time to be. And then a lot of the Dornish people were wanting to go on these skirmishes. Um, so we had like a, a, every event, not every event, because we don't have enough armies at the minute, but at the start of the event usually is when we do our selections for general. Yeah. Uh, that means that the uh, the senators have to be present to select a general. This time it's the Griffin's Pride. We have a senator in our house currently. I was planning on running for general at some point again in my LARP career um, because I was like, oh, this is actually a good opportunity because there's someone in our house running. I think it's it's too good an opportunity to pass up. So I was like, no, I'm going to run. For, I'm going to run for Griffin's Pride. Mm hmm. Uh, but that obviously meant that I couldn't come on the skirmish with you because the general selections happen at 6.30, the time you were going to go through the gate. Uh, Luke, and who's one of the senators, wanted to go on the 7 p.m. skirmish, and so did another one of the senators. So it was a bit of a panic, like, and I'm already, like, anxious about standing for general as well, so I'm like, oh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, you know I'll, I'll try and stir everything up and be like right come on because so yeah the senators uh, are the ones that get to pick the generals there's no certain nations will do it a certain way but um by the by the rules of pd it's the senators that get to decide so um the senators if it's if they feel like it they can just not have you know an interview process at all they can just give it to yeah. wh whoever they think should be general you know it's, it's but so i kind of went right uh, i'm gonna go push make sure because i don't know whether anyone has, has shown any interest um but yeah i want to i want to go in and stand um yeah that was a little bit of part of my anxiety as well especially since i was hung over as well on friday and then i was like oh no no i've got to, i've got to have my wits about me and uh you know try and try and run for general um we had one thing we didn't mention on the thursday uh is that we uh did a public speaking um class on yeah the on the friday ran by our friend martin um claire evans when she came on the podcast actually mentioned uh this workshop as well it's workshop lesson type of thing um we, we kind of went to to you know support martin and, and see what it was about but it was it was a real good uh role play warm-up because we literally did some you know we went around and and everyone uh kind of stated what their what they struggled with when it came to comes to public speaking you don't have to public speak when it comes to empire larp uh but uh for if if you're going to interact with certain parts of the game i.e if you want to run for general or be a general you're probably going to have to public speak at some point um the political pvp is is very kind of 
I would say about half and half of it is like one to one PvP and public speaking uh, PvP. So uh, yeah, we we did a class there and and we basically did some like um, kind of orchestrated role play as well because sometimes yeah. people were even you know people do, people struggle with different things. You know, for for me, I struggle if it's like a long winded speech in front of lots of people because I'm I'm fine in front of a camera. I'm I'm really good one to one. I'm a pretty good conversationalist. I can keep things going. Um, But as other people are the opposite, sometimes people struggle to literally walk up. I mean, this is a common one. People really struggle to walk up and initiate a conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, And especially if people want to be like traders or, you know, they want to sell something, you know, just going up and being like, uh, hey, and just initiate the conversation. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, like the... So the, the class itself, like it focused on like absolutely mm. everything like that. And it was really like tailored, like Oliver said, to the people that were in the room. So Martin is a professional and is absolutely incredible with 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 what he does and everything. So it is a really good opportunity to go and actually just like experience that and get that advice. I definitely use the advice from from that lesson for like the entire weekend because yeah. I had something that like I was struggling with and he gave me some like really good pointers and really good ways to kind of like make what I was struggling with work in character which was absolutely brilliant so yeah I am I, I think I think I'm probably gonna go next time as well because yeah, yeah it, was, it was good fun to help it was out really yeah good. yeah it was, it was good it was good to get the feedback from from newer LARPers as well because there was there was newer people there as well so yeah definitely go check that out because in the end, it's it's a it's what we would go for an hour, weren't we, or something? You know, it was it was a long time. It, it was it was a decent like session, yeah. like yeah, I think it was longer than an hour actually. In the yeah. end, because yeah. yeah, um, and it was in the military council tent this time. I'm not sure if it's there um every time, but that's where it was this time, and it, it was it was such a good opportunity. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. Uh. So anyway, yeah, I I was uh, I went and I stood for general. Um. It it became apparent. After the probably the first kind of questions that were was asked, that I was like, ah, I'm on the back foot here a bit. So the the the, the current incumbent, I think that's the right word. Yeah, the current incumbent is is very strong. Arcavians are very obviously a very uh, capable um, player for that position. Um, yeah. Has been has been in the position uh, a couple of years, um, and has been in, been involved in that side of the game for a long time. Um, thing is, like the jet the the general game. And the military accounts game is a teamwork game, right? Like, cause you can't like the way they've made the game is that like no one army can't do anything basically. <laughs> like, like you can't take a territory. You can't. You can't. You, there's very little you can do with one army in the campaign. Uh, you have to work with the other armies uh, to do it. So, it, it, all in all, like you've at least got to be uh, a good team player with your nations, <laughs> your your other nations, yeah. generals, and things like that. Um, but anyway, you know, so I knew I was on the back foot against like Arcavian. Um, there was another two characters that went for it as well. Um, they were, I would probably say, better prepared uh, for questions regarding the campaign. Um, I had done it. I wouldn't say I had done it on a whim. I had I had plenty of time to study for it. Unfortunately, real life meant that I, I was a little bit behind and maybe where I should have been studying for it. However, I was happy because I just wanted to put Damon's name in the ring you know for yep. that type of stuff because I know Nymeria has like shown interest uh in the military game and I'm like I'm gonna have to like just start put- so other because otherwise people don't think of you they if they go oh yeah you know uh, th- who wants to be a general I-, I need to start going right okay well Damon wants to be um a general it was also good practice I mean a, a very different experience to when I ran for it as Godric my first ever event you know because uh the um because you know the players who are playing the senators uh, know me out of character now, um, and so that yeah they didn't they didn't uh, hold but there was no holding back at all, um, and yeah they, they they I think yeah two of them I think two two of the questions like bad badly caught me out, um, I would say just of my lack of knowledge one of them in particular um, not understanding how adjutants work um, really tripped me up um, but it was a it was a learning experience um for the yeah. next time um so i'm not going to divulge my plans going forward uh but i my plans have maybe changed slightly i would say um but anyway uh that was that was kind of why i wasn't with 
uh, with you on that skirmish, which was a weird one because I wanted to come with you on the skirmish and have fun fighting. And it's a weird type of fun to be like, right, I, you know, I wanted, I wanted, this is what I want to do for the long run. Um, it wasn't massively like pleasurable as running off and going, going killing undead, um, sitting there in an intense interview situation, not being successful. And then going, oh, okay, you know, back back to the drawing board when I could have been out having fun killing things with you. So that was a that was a weird one. It, it, like, I I still, if I could go back, I would still do it. Yeah, definitely. But you know what I'm trying to say? It's like this, yeah. this is the type of thing that LARP kind of puts you in sometimes. Sometimes, like, sometimes I'm like, you know, would I have had way more? I probably would have had way more fun out with you. Just gives you these machine. profound decisions. Julie, these profound decisions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> profound. God, that's a good name for a company, isn't it? <laughs> Um, it, it keeps coming back around. Uh, but any, but anyway, uh, well, before I go into my next thing, uh, do you want to? Because then we kind of met up after this, right? So, oh, the skirmish. Um, so I was with um, Martin Durandal, and we were ready to like head through dawn, and like everyone was ready in dawn, and I was like looking at the time, like right now we need to go now. I had all my groups, I had some of them that were getting rituals sorted out, so I had everyone there behind me ready to go, and I was like, right, okay. And I was looking down at this path. I was like, so right through the glory square, take it. Let, let's go for it. And I just, I've got a new weapon this time. I've now got a great sword. So I was like, there with my great sword. I just started walking out ahead and everybody followed. And like Martin was next to me. He was like, I could chunk of being in charge. It's just walking with purpose. I was like, so does that mean we're off to a good start? <laughs> As we just like walked straight down to the, the gate and this is when things got quite interesting and there was a lot of people there obviously um the skirmish itself was quite personal to to Nymeria because Nymeria was in Orzel and it was her Varushkin cousins that were like in need so, yeah, so it what was, was actually quite happening because this is the first time I'm kind of paying attention to this as well like you told me sort of what happened but I didn't go through all the details so I know you would say on a, so what was what was the actual objective and where were you going so we were heading to Karov and Basically, the um the Deadwood Knight was threatening people and different like caravans that were traveling on the westward road. So it was limiting who could travel where, and it was like halting the movement of supplies that we needed. Yeah, typical so... RPG storyline. <laughs> Sorry. Said so, yeah, typical RPG storyline. Oh <laughs> yeah, um yeah. So like, there's somebody that's tasked with overseeing this road basically and making sure that it's safe. And the overseer of the road is actually um my cousin because they are a Varushka, and um, a Nymeria is an Orzel, and Orzel originally was in Varushka. Yes. So we now have like um the, all these cousins all over the place. And there's again why Orzel tend to use the term cousin quite a lot as well, is because they were Varushkin. So that's kind of how like what tied all that in together, which was quite cool. So we got down to the gate and there was so many people there and I was like shit there's so many and like the first thing Starash said to me was just count your numbers so I was like right okay got everybody into into groups into rows I made sure that the people I really wanted were near the front so I had like um I had like a full night coven coming who had did a ritual for this skirmish mm -hmm. so I was like they're coming because like also kind of out of character I'm like I've literally just asked them to go and do this ritual. I'm not going to then be like, ah, sorry, you just wasted all that mana. <laughs> um, so I had them at the the front um, and then um, a few others that were with us or like our mortar. We had all of Orzel and then everyone else that like, grouped in behind. And things got a little bit messy in the sense that all the numbers were a weaver of some of the other groups coming had a lot more and we were sorting out the order going into the gate and dawn was going in last basically that means if we are over it will be dawn that will be cut is yeah. is basically what they were saying so a few hours were a wee bit like oh, okay right fair enough um but i was given the left flank mm-hmm so we, we've got our plan and everything. And what was really cool is the person running the skirmish got every single person that was leading each nation together. And we planned out like, what are we doing? Where are we going? Um, and made all that nice and clear and everything. And that was that was pretty cool. Um, 
also realizing now that I've actually got a little bit of knowledge when it comes to doing skirmishes because I had a few people like run about the games of asking questions like oh how do we do this how do we do that and I was like oh you want to go to the war scout over there you need to go up to that one over there you I mean, you've need been someone playing to a while so <laughs> you've been playing a good, a good, a good while now so. but yeah we all we all got ready um we had to like cut a few people in dawn and keep a few others and luckily we managed to kind of like all get ready to go and we waited there as everyone went through Dawn went through last and Dawn was originally 32 people I think we got cut down to like 12 yeah. <laughs> to take the left flank Oof. yeah yeah <laughs> it was um yeah but it was fine so we all headed in now the Deadwood night we knew that we were going to be up against husks so these sort of like undead warriors if you like and we were given little bits of information just as we were about to go through the gate. One of the like really crucial bits of information was that the Deadwood Knight would have every ability they had when they were alive. That ascent and that when they were alive, they were like a monster hunter. So essentially, these husks and these knights saw all of us as monsters. And it was their job to hunt these monsters. They would have had things like potions. They would have been able to heal, recover, do all sorts of crazy things. And there was a lot of rumors flying around of, um, yeah, apparently when you cut them down, they don't say dead. You've got to do something really specific. Other people were saying, yeah, they're husks, but they're not moving like husks. They're running, which is terrifying. But we kind of went in being like, okay, so like Schrodinger's husks at the minute I mean like we don't know what we're about to go face Schrodinger's husks what? well they were both normal husks and really not normal husks at the same time at that moment because yeah. that's what we were told <laughs> okay okay sure <laughs> so we headed in we ended up going straight around like the sort of like back way path towards the woods. And when you do that, you actually go through an out of character bit. So anyone who's kind of gone and done like a little skirmish on the side, you go in an out of character section and everyone does tend to break character there and have a bit of a chat. And I think at that moment I turned to to Sam plays Martin and was, and I was like, yeah, no, I'm actually scared. Like, <laughs> and he was like, no, you'll be fine. Honestly, he was like, if anything was wrong, like we're all here. It's fine. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. So we headed in and everybody was going off up to the other side. So like everyone was going to the middle and off to the right. And I took my little Donish group around to the left. Yeah. I will and say as well, like that, that does rattle you when you go for a skirmish and then people that you're expecting to come with you to help you don't get in. That can rattle you quite a bit. I'm like, oh, oh okay. They're not here. Mm. But they went in. I put everyone to the left. There was a few shouts of husks, husks, husks. And I, thought, I was like, no, no, stop. Just wait, actually. Because I saw the husks. I also saw that they were in some really thick foliage. And I was mm -hmm. like, ah, we're not running in there. No. Let's wait a minute. Because at first there was two or three. And, a few, and then before I knew it, it was quite a few husks sort of like crawling towards us. One of them had this like flail that was, they were like, like really like slowly like moving it around. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Are they armored? Oh, yeah. The heavy armors, yeah. Um, well, so there was a mixture. So the, the Deadwood Knight and a few of the other ones, they were full plate, heavy armor from head to they were they were full armor. Yeah. Husks a little bit of a mixture. A lot of them were quite quite armored, which I wasn't really expecting. Mm. Um and their weaponry was amazing. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, but they were moving slow. So I basically was like, okay, right, we've got all of Dawn. Do you know what? They got close enough. I was like, let's just charge them and cut them down. <laughs> So we did that. We charged them. We cut them down. Had a little shout out to Skirmish Crew here because the acting and the role play here was incredible. Um, my first time using this like big great sword I, like, as my character. So I was really given these big like, bah! like these big sweeping sort of like attacks, but really like making sure my blows were like pulled. It was a wee bit of a different action than I'm used to. And I was like trying to really show off. And there was actually one of them that I did this huge almighty like. Wah! And I think I just kind of got the fabric on their, their clothing and not them. But they acted as if I had like sliced them in two. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty, that's so cool. oh, yeah. yeah, that is cool. It was fun. Um, they all went down. And I think I like said to our mate, pen, I was like, make sure you execute all them. <laughs> like, let's keep going. And we were like, and then we got to a point 
or we had a few of them coming and I was like, ah, we could do it with flanking them. Everyone else was dealing with things from the other side. And I was like, oh, we're meant to have like a flank coming around. And then like Martin's like, I'll flank. So we had one Donish night beer flank from the other side. And we just like completely destroyed them. Then it came to the actual head good night who was like, full armor from head to toe big proper like was helmet it the actual on because we're still i thought it was just his lieutenants that are it's like... like his lieutenants i believe yeah. is what we were, were dealing mm. with but basically there was like three that looked like lieutenants if mm. you like they were all proper armor that he took so th th this particular one took a while to cut down um but eventually got him down and tried a few things um i'll leave that stuff until in character because that stuff's still kind of going on mm. um, and tried a few things um and yeah then it was done mm. and the the person running the skirmish did something really cool because at this point here he turned around to everyone's right everyone gathered around we're still out there in the woods and i'm so used to a skirmish happening and then being like right let's get back to the gate he was like no nah, let's all stop okay we're done i'm gonna debrief you here this is what we have done. This is what we have managed. Um, all objectives have been sorted out now. Um, thank you to this group. Thank you to this group. And did this whole debrief because we had enough time to do that. And then he was like, right, okay. And I head back to the gate. And this is when it was like, um, because we're like, Dawn do can like head off first. And it's like, Dawn are just like spread out, you know, casually walking. And then you've got all the marchers in perfect order, all the, um, all winter mark in perfect order, all Rushkin's perfect. And Dawn are just like, yeah, well, we don't typical, walk the line. Typical, yeah, we don't <laughs> walk <on>. a line. <laughs> What's a line? Oh my gosh. But what was really cool, there was a really cool moment at the end because Dawn were actually first, they were last in um, this time of first out. Mm -hmm. um, so we got to the gate and they went out and I was like, right, on you go. And I stayed. I stayed at like this side sort of thing because I watched wait until my uncle, my cousin had got up and I waited because they were at the end. So as everyone went through, the three of us walked through to gather at the end, which was just like quite cool to do. And it was a lot of fun. And we got to meet a lot of really cool new friends there and invite them all to something else later in the weekend. So yeah, it was a really, a fun little start to the evening, really. Yeah, I heard that Morrigan de decapitated someone as well. <laughs> Morrigan decapitated someone with a knife. <laughs> An enemy, I think. Like, <laughs> sawing them with a knife. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was brutal. Oh, Nymeria got to take the head. Yeah, unfortunately, they didn't have a fizz rep for you, did they? They were just like... I was like, I was like can I take the head? They are like, you can't take the fizz rep, meaning the helmet. They were like, but technically, yeah. I was like, so I have the head. And they went, you have the head. You like, have the cool. head, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we should we should really get a collection of like fizz reps for that type of thing because you can't that's something you can do you know. I think that's what we're kind of talking about doing, mm. um, because we're like, oh, the net can like um preserve things. I think that was our icy way of saying let's get a fizz rep. <laughs> yeah, you fought the Dunnings as well. I did. I got to fight yeah. with the Dunnings for the first time, which I've never actually had any interaction with before. Mm. I got to fight with Blaze, who was amazing. Um, so I think I've made, made a new a new icy connection there and everything. Because then I ended up meeting Blaze like several times throughout the weekend after that, like in different meetings and just wandering around. I was like, wow, it's like <laughs> Yeah. It's that sort of thing because I got to chat to them for a little bit mm. going through and everything, which is quite it was really good fun. Yeah. So I think now we made that connection, especially with the types of skirmishes that Miriam might get given um in the future. I think I made a quite good connection there by having like that sort of positive interaction with the Dunnings there. So who knows? Yeah, yeah. So that was a good that was a good little that was a win for you leading leading Dawn on a skirmish, um, which was which was good. Now so once that had finished, uh, yeah, Luke. The thing is, Lucan had said to me, "Oh, are you not coming on the next skirmish?" So the next skirmish was again a Deadwood Night one, but this one was yeah. in Weirwater, and it was literally in Weirwood, which is literally where House Mortair is. Like the actual our actual manor is right where this skirmish was taking place, um, and the the Deadwood Knights basically trying to destroy small Dornish houses currently. Um, so. You know, I like Luca was like, right, I'm definitely want to go on that one. Um, and then obviously, you know, he was taking part in my in the general selection. Um, and then he was like, Well, are you coming too? And I'm like, No, because there's something else on. Uh we have the Lance Captain's meeting. So um I last event 
I had spent a lot of time on the Friday trying to organize like the communication issues that we, you know, Dawn seems to think it has. And there has been a little bit. Um, and I was trying to push and be like, like we get to decide who the, who the leader of Dawn is, right? Mm. There's no point in going and complaining about leadership when no one is turning up to the meetings and deciding who is leading us. Cause it's up to the nation who leads their nation, not the generals. The generals probably have a good say because they have a, maybe, a, maybe, maybe, a better idea on tactics uh they've made it very clear the general position is not a combat position right you do not have yeah, to take yeah, field yeah. as a general you don't have to do any combat whatsoever as a general um but the, the, the two are intertwined because that you, when you at military council on the friday you are going to be choosing your field marshals for those battles and who is going on those battles so you need to know a little bit about kind of tactics um but anyway i i was i tried very hard i put a lot of effort into the previous event and i was like Okay, I'm going to stand for general, but I also want to stand to lead Dawn. So yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't do that skirmish either because uh, I was like, well, the lance captain's meeting is literally at like, I think it was like at seven or seven thirty. Um, thirty, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, well, I, I won't be able to do that one because I need to go and have a word with a few people beforehand uh, to do that and do my usual going around and speaking to people and speaking to the lances of Dawn and things like that. So and that's where I where I met up with you. Um, did you see like Luke and Morrigan trying to get into the, the skirmish? Yeah, you yeah. saw it. Yeah. You know yeah. I was there. So I, um, Morgan was like down there and Morgan was like, do you think they might be four and everything? And I was like, well, they might do. Can always just go over and see. Um, so she headed over to join in and then Luke and came running down, like with his armor on and everything like, yes, I made it. And I'm like, damn, I was like, is um Damon with you? And he's like, no, he's not with me. I was like, okay, cool. So I don't have to follow you out onto the skirmish. Um, and yeah, he went in and he he joined in with like so uh, Morgan and everyone ready to go through. And that is the last I saw of them actually. Because yeah. then I was like, I was like, okay, he's definitely not here. Mm. He's not turning up. So then I'll I'll head back to Dawn and see how everything went. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I I stood to, uh, because yeah, I wanted to I wanted to make it very clear to everyone. Hey, look, like we we decide, and then obviously like put myself forward to lead Dawn, and I was unsuccessful in that as well. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then like, yeah, so like I can meet up with you, we had like a chat and yeah. everything, and then yeah, I went to um Lance Captain's meeting, yeah. which yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, again, yeah, I was un unsuccessful in that. Um, I I basically ended up I ended up like seconding uh to lead dawn um yeah so it, it it's obviously a little bit of a weird a weird evening at that point because again it's like you know larp should be about putting yourself forward for things you're not gonna you know it, it's it's part of the pvp is that you know you're not gonna just get every position you're gonna go for obviously but it was kind of it was one of those where i was like all my friends are going off on skirmishes and i'm having to like stay here because i don't know i've got these ambitions of doing it and I failed like twice over. And then I'm like, this is like type two fun. You know, <laughs> it's just like, okay. Um, again, not complete, not like the choices, you know, were, were completely legitimate. I did not feel cheated at all. Um, out of either, out of either position or whatever. Um, and I think I made good headway into achieving some of those goals as well. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I've, I've, I've pretty much, uh, been positioning myself to to lead the nation. Um, anyway, uh, this is what I'm 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 trying to do, and it's not it's not about just leading because that's the, people who've talked to me in character gonna know my opinions, and if you don't, uh, yeah, please come and talk to me on uh <laughs> on on the leadership of Dorm because I do not think we we need a oh yeah this one person is in charge and then this person is in charge and this person is in charge. I think it's it needs to be way more. It's it's way more fluid than that um but yeah my, my uh my resume is 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 still building but it was it was yeah it's it's do you know what i'm trying to say it's it's a it's a yeah. different type of fun and i was like it was a little bit again the, the I, I knew i was doing the right thing but the anxiety was building yeah because other people were going off doing fun things killing zombies and i was like cool i'll try and do this oh i failed i'll try to do this I failed again. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like, well, it's is... like you said, though, you mm. do need to keep putting yourself forward for those things because yeah. you can look at it as a failure or you can look at it as um, 
another group of people know your name and another oh, no, group of people know your yeah. name and so on and so on yeah. like it you become an obvious choice for certain things yeah. um no matter how many times you've tried for something like you, you you improve each time with it and it's like I, I guess I guess what's difficult with that is that is there's a quite a big real life element into that that a lot of us face mm. when it comes to like jobs and things like that and that sort of like deflation of putting yourself forward for things and and not being successful but like you're just kind of getting there each time but it's just not part it's it's a it's a it's a different form of gameplay to that yeah, to, yeah. to going off and hitting something with a sword you know and it was just. It was just weird. Like I would have wouldn't have felt as bad if all those skirmishes were on the next day, and I would have gone on them. Like it was just, it was just that feeling of just like, oh, god, you know, I could, I could have gone and, instead of instead of going for like two positions and not getting them, I could have gone out and and uh, fought some cool zombies because it, it, and in the end, I didn't get to do any skirmishing at all this event, you know. And Damon hasn't done any skirmishing, uh, which is, is is like, oh yeah, you know, they just the opportunities just haven't lined up um yeah for me the, these these past uh few events but i I wasn't gonna let all that work that i did go to waste either and i don't think I, it didn't it definitely didn't uh but yeah so like after after lance captain's meeting it was a little bit like <sighs> okay um and i gotta admit i did have to then have just go and have a little time out in my own tent yeah. um just to kind of do a deep breath and go okay I'll just assess what uh, the things that have happened here and go, okay, you know, this, what, what, how do I move forward uh, now with it? Now, what, what does Damon want to do? Because the, you sometimes you get lost in, okay, that was a type two type of fun, being disappointed. Um, but then going, okay, you know, I've learned from that. And then you go, actually, you know, would I have been have more fun doing something else? But then you got to remember like, all right, no, what, what does Damon want in this moment? You know, d- there's a reason why... I made the choice for Damon not to go on those skirmishes and then he did something else. Um, yeah. So I, I've got to take what happened in those in those two interactions and uh, make something from it. Otherwise, it really would have been wasted time, basically. And it wasn't exactly, at the, at the yeah. end of the weekend. I have a, diff- I have a completely different outlook of it now, um, but I'm just kind of trying to put across how you feel in the moment, you know? So. Yeah, um, I don't know. That makes sense. Mm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so like um at that point then it was time for military council to start. Mm. Um so Nymeria pretty much spent her evening in military council from that point. Yeah. Um so um stood with the golden sun and kind of like just tried to keep my getting my head around things and um I literally stood there the in the, the entire military council and um took notes um and what was really good is a uh, quite a lot of people did kind of like turn around in their seats to be like okay this is what's happening here or what do you think of this and it was quite fun because I was like oh and I was writing all my things and I was kind of looking over the shoulders because what they do at the start is they they're like um they say things like oh um this ban this mercenary banner is going here and they've got this many people and I'm like guessing the weights as I'm going and just kind of like scribbling it down I kind of look o- looked over him geese shoulder and I was like I've got the same numbers <laughs> like, yeah, by the way most so... people will not li- listening to this even if we played Empire of Wild will not have a clue what you're talking about when you talk about weights like what? Are, what? Are, like for, force weightings? What are they? We, we've had a couple of generals on the podcast explain it. It's not that obvious either. A force weighting is your fighting weight from a nation, and your force weighting numbers basically um, tell you how many people you think are going to turn up physically. So, for example, a nation with a huge number of people but only a small number of fighters will probably have a smaller force weighting than a nation that has fewer people in the nation, but more people that tend to fight. And you get nations that always tend to fight. I'm like, Imperially or uh, Imperially (laughs) (laughs) Orcs. I like that name for them. Are you an Imperial (laughs) York? Yeah. (laughs) Imperial Orcs. (laughs) Dawn. Wintermark. Mm. You can probably guarantee a good chunk of that nation will be fighting. They'll have the, the, that's, you know, mm. how that works. But then other nations, not as many of them fight and, and so on. Now, the actual math side of it is one fourth weight 
re relates to a number of people. And a lot of people have got different numbers for that. And it's yeah. like, um, and worked out different ways of doing it. But it kind of feels almost a little like, oh, I'm never going to get my head around this. But the easiest way to get your head around it is to literally stand in that military council and listen. Because yeah. it does it does sink in more in play. Because you just start to realize a bit more like, oh, okay, now I get it. And yeah. There's certain ones that you just end up knowing, especially if you've fought with certain mercenary banners. You just kind of know or they they roughly always have twenty in that group. But this group usually have about ten. If you yeah, and if you role play with them, you kind of know who who you know has yeah exactly. You know beforehand if you're friends with the Crimson Reapers, you know who has the contract for the Crimson Reapers and things like that. You have a good idea who they're going with, and <clears> um, you know you you, you can get kind of get all that information quite early so i mean in the basics people who are maybe a little bit confused at this the, the reason there's numbers is because we'd go on two different battles one on the saturday one on the sunday and for uh fairness and game balance we want roughly the same amount of people going out to fight for the empire on both days you know yeah because then the other half are then monstering so you get an e equal ish number of people fighting against each other so you can't you can't just be like oh we're gonna send uh, we're going to send nine nations out on Saturday because we really want to win. And on Sunday, we don't care about that one. So we'll just send Arizona on, on their own. You know, you can't like that. You can't do that. The idea no. is you need to balance them as close as you can. Um, so as Robin said, there are smaller nations, there are bigger nations. So usually what happens, if you've heard us talk about on this, on this podcast before, usually what happens, you'll get like a couple of big nations and a couple of small nations and then one big nation and then several small nations, you know. Um yeah, and like the um the way that it works as well, if you have a look on the wiki page and you click on wins the war, make sure in the right year, um, as you scroll down, it'll have a little table for force weightings. And to the left of that table will be a sentence and that'll tell you your minimum and your maximum. It's basically the minimum number of people that can go and the maximum is what they're kind of getting at. Because if you're within that, you're going to be roughly the same. Yeah, it's not um, an exact science. It can't be because oh god, some, no, no. Sometimes people need to go home early and they don't show up anyway. And yeah, it's not it's not an exact science. Exactly. Mm. Um, when it comes to determining who goes which day, that's what is discussed and decided in the military council. Mm. Um, some of the factors tend to be where they're going. Um, for example, if we're going to the barns to reclaim the barns, you could probably guarantee Don will be going there um that sort of thing or there's also certain um barbarian orcs that don't play well with certain nations and sometimes the empire will choose not to send a nation to a particular place one day for example the navarre so the yeah the navarre. The, yeah like the yotun <laughs> barbarians do just they hate the navari and they they don't see them as people um, and the Navarre uh, reciprocate that, that feeling. So currently, the Ocean are weird because they're like that. They they have this on this kind of weird honor society um, where to get good relations with them, you want to fight them honorably. Basically, is what's currently happening. So we kind of want to close that front. It would be nice to close because fighting on four fronts is 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 terrible. Currently, we're fighting on three fronts out of. Yeah, uh, you know, and because uh, we're fighting the Grendel again, so ideally, if we could like make some sort of peace with the Jotun, that would be ideal. So when the Empire has that in mind, it's probably not a good idea to go send the Navarre out to go kill the Jotun uh, to fight the Jotun because uh, they'll they'll go and they they'll execute them dishonorably and they'll really piss the Jotun off. And we'll never make peace with them, type thing. Yeah, um, so that's like thing. Yeah. So these, so it's not just the numbers. You've got to think of like the 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 political side of um, who you're going to send. Yeah. And then sometimes, yeah, we don't want to fight on certain days, and or we don't want to fight with certain other nations, you know. And th there's all that political PvP going on. So yeah, there's um, a lot of that that happens. Certain nations not wanting to fight with one another. Um, um, also, like certain objectives might look as if they mean a lot to for example the brass coast but that objective might also mean a lot to another nation therefore hmm. they make that argument of no we should be going there this this is personal to us sort of thing yeah. so and it's it's a long discussion basically a military council it goes on for a long time when it comes to discussing basically first of all they start off with your numbers and then they do a big discussion where they read out all the um the, the, the opportunities there's what they read out yeah. and then we decide which 
two opportunities are getting taken and then which one is getting done on each day yeah. some opportunities can only be getting can only be fought on one day some can be other day and then you go into which which nations are going really yeah um yeah. So I mean, yeah, yeah. This so this time we decided to go to Calavesa, which is in Wintermark. It's a Wintermark mm -hmm. territory uh, to fight the Jotun, and it was just basically go get a banner, um, go go get the so and some a, swords. Yeah, so there's a, a Jotun. What do they call them? Uh, Yarl? Was it a Yarl or was it a warlord? No, I think it was just some. I think it was just a new warlord general. I think it was yeah. a warlord. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So he he's come and Calavesa is is in imperial territory. So they're coming into imperial territory. We're going to go, basically demoralize that. Basically, just you know, kick him out and be like, no, no, he's useless. And the Jotun will probably be like, no, sling your rook because you got defeated by the Empire type thing. Um. And then uh, the other one we took was Madruga. So Madruga. Uh, was Madruga? Yeah, it was Madruga. It's, it was Madruga. It's, it's yeah. all the M's. Was, we had the M's. It was we? either Madruga Mar or or Marie. Yeah, Marie. Yeah, it was Madruga. It was quite funny though, a military council because um, you you discuss each one. Marie came up, and it kind of involves like killing baby turtle eggs, and I think everybody Were we killing them. Uh, was it destroying them? Yeah. Oh no, it, it was, was. Yeah, because the. Yeah. Yeah, because. And I think everybody at once when we don't want to hurt baby turtles. Yeah. No. No. We're not even discussing. It's <laughs> like a nope. So we're not. So, so there you go, three day. That's what happened. We don't want to kill babies. So we don't want to kill babies. Uh, <laughs> we don't want to kill babies. Unless, animals. unless so they're unless they're cracking babies, uh, and then we probably do need to kill them. Uh, so we ended up going to Madruga. So the Madruga thing currently, Madru so Madruga was a Brass Coast territory. Um, it when the Grendel came in and attacked recently last season when the treaty was over them they basically uh, did an all out assault on on Madruga. Um, so it's no longer it's not it's not a Grendel territory. It's but it's no longer Brass Coast territory now either. Um, they they've invaded. Uh, we've sent lots of armies in there. Um, but currently in. Madruga, there is a uh, the kilt. There is a cult to the Eternal Siaka, who is a Spring Eternal. Um, you may have heard us talk about Siaka on this podcast if you're a longtime listener. Last year, House Mortair got involved in a load of Siaka stuff. We ended up having Shark Heralds coming after the house and things like that. Um, yeah. So Madruga, there is a uh, like she's basically a high priestess of Siaka, isn't she? And uh, a load of basically, there's lots of uh, Grendel that have gone over to this this Siaka cult. So currently, Madruga, uh, we've got three kind of warring factions. We've got this Siaka <laughs> Siaka cult. We've got just the Grend, just the Grendel mercenaries, and then we've got the Empire as well vying for Madruga. Uh, so yeah, we it's, and and the the main objective for Madruga was to stop. Uh, there's no main objective, but the, the one that sticks out was that we had to stop. Uh, these Kraken eggs. Basically, if if we didn't get these Kraken eggs, then uh, oh no, it wasn't egg. No, no, it wasn't eggs at all, was it? It wasn't. Why am I saying eggs? Was it? Because it was eggs. Yeah. There was there was eggs. There so was what was, the, what was the ritual? I'm 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 forgetting what the ritual was. I there the ritual was... was to do with the Kraken. So there was twenty six um Kraken eggs, and the Empire needed to secure at least half of them to to stop them being yeah. able to like you know take control that's of the, the right yeah. and everything in that yeah. area and destroy all of our, our ships and everything yeah so there was, um, yeah, there was the eggs there was a ritual we had to save someone and kill someone. we had to save a kid yeah i think yeah we had to kill someone mm. there was rituals um there, there was a lot yeah like yeah but yeah. so dawn yeah. wanted to go on that one because that we were like yeah we can do that um, I don't we, do that one, yeah. Yeah, we were like, cool, you know, because we, we kind of expected Wintermark to go off with the, to do the, Jot to, you know, fight in their own territory against the Jotun. That seems to make sense. Um, they're a big nation. We are also a big nation. We were like, well, it then makes sense if we don't want Navarre. They're probably not going to want Navarre to go there. So probably Wintermark with a load of smaller nations are going to take the Calavesa and then Dawn, Navarre, and, and whoever's left is going to take uh the madruga one uh mm. yeah didn't plan it didn't pan out like that <laughs> no <laughs> nope it did not <laughs> so we thought we were i, I don't on think many people were happy both sides actually if i remember oh, really? rightly 
Yeah, because a lot of I people it was were unanimous, worried. Apart from Dawn, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I think the Dawn is generally the only ones that didn't have their hands up when they went. Who's okay with the the, the option of Dawn going to? Yeah, yeah, because we ended up with two I, options, and you know, obviously one with Dawn going on one day, the other was Dawn going the other day, and basically I think it was unanimous for yeah. the winter mark Dawn. I think it was more like the talk up. around after that that people were like, "Wait, so." March was Wintermark and Dawn, those big like hitters are all going one day, <laughs> and it was like a bit of a yeah. okay. I'll be honest, I don't know the politics of why they wanted Dawn uh, on that on the Saturday. Um, so that kind of changed our plans a bit. Mm-hmm. The, not plans, but we we had for whatever reason we had in our head that oh we're most likely going to be fighting Sunday, and uh, now oh okay we're fighting Saturday. So that then meant that we you know we had to go around and tell everyone oh by the way we're fighting tomorrow. Um, which obviously it was quite, elongates Friday night yeah. with military council stuff. It was quite cool actually because like you like had come in and I like had all my notes and everything and I remember just being like, here, take that to the person they didn't turn. <laughs> that yeah. that's what's happening. Yeah. They, they need to know now <laughs> what's yeah. happening because we've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um yeah, so we so we we were heading out to fight on the on the Saturday. Um, and then, yeah, the rest of the night was just spent um, basically getting ready for the following morning. Uh, so when we had a really good, I was, I was really proud. I was really proud of my nation. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not going to take credit. Um, I might take a little bit, a little bit of credit because it was basically what I've been pushing for since the start of the year was the the first Lance captains meeting. Because you say to people, oh, "Are you interested in command?" A lot of people go, "Oh yeah," especially like gun ho, you know. Uh, you know foam sword junkies will be like yeah i want to lead a lance you know and be a hero cool and they all show up to lance captain's meeting the first one but then once we know where we're going there's another meeting which takes place after the field marshal brief which is after military council so it ends up being everyone <laughs> ish it ended up being half 11 by the time we actually did it you know and then it was way gone midnight by the time we finished um also almost at time out so usually people lose their enthusiasm to come to a lance captain's meeting at midnight <laughs> so yeah. but this time lots of people showed up which was really really good <laughs> it was awesome oh there yeah. was like a full room mm. us all being able to properly gather yeah. around that table in the middle and discuss things and it was it was pretty beautiful um it was um yeah, Dave Morum is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> like yeah. having them like lead everything there and go through all like like who was doing what and answer mm. those questions and working it all out and stuff and just showing outwardly like how proud they were of so many people coming yeah. coming to that meeting. It made it made, it made you feel welcome, like yeah. overly welcome. Like you're like, oh yes, I I should be here. Yeah. This is good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it it was one of those where we had a few people that weren't present either at the event or at the meeting. And I think, you know, they, if they listen to this, they know who they are. And I love, I love you all dearly. Um, Cause you know, I, I like each and every one of you as friends, but the fact that you, you guys weren't there, other people were stepping up, which was quite, which was quite good. Cause sometimes when people are so experienced, people will just like default go, Oh, just tell us what to do, <laughs> you know, but because certain people weren't in attendance, at the event or whatever, um, people then went, oh, we, you know, we, we like, we need to make a plan, you know. So um, that was good. Yeah. So we got to that the um, the Friday night. There was a lot of running around late at night. A lot of like, um, there was a lot of political stuff going on that Friday night. Like a lot of like listening and things, getting information, sharing yeah. that with the right people. Um, a lot of networking and a lot of like using yeah. people to, to to everyone's ad- advantage in yeah. the sense that certain people get along with certain people and so on. And it was, it was just fun. Really. Yeah, no, it was, it was fun. It, it was good. So <laughs> we had, yeah, we had a uh, so the field marshal was a winter marker. Now the the big worry was that. <laughs> The, the last time Dawn and Wintermark fought together, um, our characters died. <laughs> yeah. Because we, Dawn... Along with 48 in... other Dawn. Yeah. We, and... Uh, Pretty bad. The, because the plan was, <laughs> right, Dawn's going to go and do the objective in the woods. And the plan for this battle was, oh, Dawn and Wintermark together with the march again. I think it was, I think it was almost an identical roster, wasn't it? So It was. Dawn... 
went to mark marches. <laughs> marches. Um, uh, we had the Imperial Orcs this time. I yeah. don't know who we had last time. I'm sure there has to have been someone else there, but I don't yeah. think it was the Imperial Orcs. But yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So obviously, clearly, people were like, "Oh, what?" So do- again, you know, type thing. Uh, but our field marshal this time, Osric, was uh, very much like, "Right, Dawn, you need to tell me what what." you can do <laughs> what you feel like you're capable of doing and you know i need to talk to people who know how you work basically so that that was that was really refreshing you know i i think you know those of us in dawn that actually we spoke to the field marshal felt listened to um felt like we were going to get used uh in the correct way as well yeah um so no well, it was all good it was all good um yeah. we're, we're coming up on time for this episode i will say as well that we we almost uh uh had one of our family members executed uh because uh, as we as we left apparently <laughs> lucan had gone on that skirmish um was told they couldn't go on that skirmish um gate jumped anyway and then uh was reported to the militia um and then um i'd spoken to killian like earlier in the day being like oh i've got to go give a virtue defense for luke and i'm like why what has happened and i found out what happened they're like right i'm off to the trial um i don't think the trial obviously didn't go amazingly because they slapped a big old fine on us and uh they were like if it's not paid then it's gonna be execution at noon (laughs) the next day we're like uh okay okay." um so that was that was fun drama (laughs) for the house (laughs) especially for a house that we'd we'd spent a lot of money last event you know we've managed to recoup some of it and they were like oh okay this could be interesting (laughs) yeah Yeah. we'll maybe we'll maybe cover what happened there in the next in the next oh yeah we will maybe need to (laughs) yeah yeah right are we are we all are we all done for this one is it not anything else we didn't cover that happened on the friday i don't think so i I think we've pretty much got all the things on the friday i think yeah yeah. Well, if we if we remember, we'll we'll talk about it uh, on the next episode. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for listening to this episode. If you are new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you like, comment down below. Tell us what you got up to at E1. If you haven't been to Empire yet, uh, tell us what you're looking forward to. If you're coming to an event in the future, and if you are, then we do actually have a discount code. Our referral code is down in the description below. You can put that in. You still get £15 off. I think the ticket prices have gone up since last year. But you still get £15 off your first event if you use that code as well. If you're listening on an audio platform, give us a five-star review. Go check out the Patreon if you want to support us in that way. Until the next time, though, we love you very much and stay safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.